Hey guys, welcome to the Integrated Entrepreneur. I am here with my co-host Keith. Keith, what's going on? What's up, my man? How are you today, bro? Oh, dude, I'm great. Had a great weekend, and something that's been on my mind. One of those things that separates great from good from average is the ability to master delayed gratification. Right? Yeah. Everyone talks about that over. Everyone talks about that overnight success. There's no such thing, right? The people that are quote unquote successful have all mastered delayed gratification. They're able to build and build and build, and they might not necessarily see results while they're building, yeah. but it all adds up in the end to massive wins. If you can stay with it long enough, why do you think yeah. people can't delay gratification? Do I think just people give up fucking way too goddamn easy, man? Like, I think people see a little bit of success or, you know, like they see their homie, their friend, this old colleague, like blow up overnight, right? Because we haven't paid attention to them. And then all of a sudden they're driving around in the damn Lamborghini or whatever the case is. And kind of like in the last podcast, that must be nice thing comes to reality, right? For them. They're like, well, that must be nice. Let me go do the same shit. If he can do it, I can do it. Well, what they don't see is like, you know, and I've been in business for almost 20 years now and uh, I had one of my business partners in town the past four days and we were ripping 17, 18 hour days, you yeah. know, of just grinding and putting different workflows together and just kind of rebuilding some things. People don't see that part. Yeah. You know, they see Keith, the old military guy, the old police officer, and now he's driving around in a nice car and lives on the river. How did he do it? Must be nice. You know, he, he must have the cheat code, you yeah. know? And I, but I think like, to your point, like no one's willing to put the damn work in anymore. They all want it now. And if they don't get it now, they go right back to their normal mediocre bullshit. Yeah. Well, right? think about it like Live this. Paycheck to paycheck. Anyone that wants anything, what do they usually do? Whip out a credit card, buy it on the spot and then figure it out later. Right. But the reality is yeah. most people don't ever figure it out, but they're used to that instant dopamine rush because they got whatever they wanted. All right. But you're right. not, you never build wealth that way. You never build anything that matters that way. And at the end, if that's all you're chasing is that dopamine rush of a, a instant gratification, you're never going to build anything that's worth it or worthwhile in the end. Okay. So I'll give you guys a quick, easy example. You said business, you're building out your processes. No one saw that. What did you specifically build out this weekend with your partner? So we, we reprogrammed the process map from when a lead comes into our ecosystem till they become fully vested as a client. Mm -hmm. We created new workflow automations off of that, new sequence of email nurture campaigns, every option from a client to falling off and not getting touched to getting retouched all the way through to like annual review meetings like the entire mm -hmm. blueprint of our operation uh, was done. We built out probably 25 new marketing strategies, all automated inside of our Monday and our CRM, our project management. Mm -hmm. We built new marketing campaigns for new funnels, right? To, to gain more leads. Yep. I mean, we basically, anything that we've done more than once, we now automated, right? And go. we did the one to many. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Right. No, but that, one to plain. many is one of the most phenomenal things that I've heard of in a long time. So if you do the same thing for each individual client and it's not something that is very personal, right, then we created a course, we created videos, we created a workbook, and now we can send that workbook out one time to many people, one yeah. to many, right? And so like, these are just some of the things because in business, man, you like lose, there's only 24 hours in the day mm -hmm. and you lose them hours very quickly working yes. on just random shit. Right. Absolutely. So we had to build out more bandwidth without trying to hire 25 new people. We hired a team of six and then we built out all these automations. Yep. Right? So we created a shit ton of bandwidth, but what it took was what people don't see. Up at five in the morning, going to bed at 11 at night and not moving from the desk and being stuck to the computer, building out all of these funnels and automations and all the stuff behind the scenes. So 
you know, that is the bipolar opposite of instant gratification. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you that's, get any that's results what we right did now? That no one sees. Yeah. When, when you were done, did you get any, did, did 30 leads just say, Hey, Keith, sell me. <laughs> Yeah. No, dude. <laughs> no, it's going to be another six months before we really truly yeah. feel any of that shit that we put into place today. Yeah. Right. It's going to take six probably, months to a year. And you're going to have to what? Revise it. See where people over. are getting stuck, where it's not working. And dude, keep... over and over and over. Uh, until it works. Yeah. And then guess what? Then you're going to build out a second set of automations because you'll probably add something to that. Right. That's the game. Never guys. ending. Never ending. Never ending. But what well, do you the think government the fucked us. Okay. Yeah, the government fucked us. Okay. Back in the day, if you wanted to buy something, you had to pull cash out of your wallet, mm -hmm. hand it to the clerk, get your change back, and look at your change and go, well, that's not a $20 bill anymore. That fucking sucks. Yeah. Right? But the masters of marketing figured out that Americans want that shit today. I want it mm -hmm. on my doorstep. So what do they do? Buy now buttons. Mm -hmm. Talk about an automation. Holy shit. Billion dollar idea a day. I can't tell you how many times I go home and there's Amazon, mm -hmm. right? UPS, FedEx, you name it. But that instant gratification. Credit yeah. cards were the, in, the, or debit cards were the initiation of that shit. Because yeah. no one really pays attention to their bank account anymore. They swipe, 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 swipe. At the end of the month, they get that bill. They're like, what the fuck? How did I spend all the money? Yeah. And, right? And, yeah. and guys, just a quick little note here. I can't think of one reason to ever use a debit card to pay for anything. Oh, never. I can't. Don't. Just rip it up. Never touch it. And here's why I'm telling you guys that. Because you should be putting it on a credit card. Because if somebody gets your credit card info, guess what? You can cancel it. Someone gets access to your bank. They're going to take all that shit, all your money before you know anything. So always use a credit card, never use a debit card. Just wanted to add that. And banks don't list. care either, FYI. No, no they don't. Yeah. They do not care. I'll give you guys a, a great example, and this leads into a lot of what you do, Keith. Two years ago, I decided, you know what? I have my stock account that I just use and mess around, and I'm not very good at investing, okay? I created a different stock account that I would just take 250 bucks a week put it in there, not touch it, have someone else mess with it. I checked it today. I never really check it because someone else is managing it and I just check it maybe once a month, but it's up to $50,000. And I can tell you, I probably only put in 30, 35,000. Mm. So that is a perfect example of delaying gratification. All right, and so many people, I can't tell you, I don't feel 250 bucks coming out of my bank account a week. However, fifth, uh, an account that has $50,000, that's actually meaningful. And how did it get to be meaningful? Well, I took a little bit every single week, stashed it away, never touched it, never looked at it. And all of a sudden, now I have a, an, an account that has $50,000. And guess what? I did the same thing to digital assets. When Bitcoin was uh, very taboo, I said, you know what? I believe in this. I see what's going on. And guys, this is not financial advice. Don't take it as fucking financial advice. But Good disclaimer. Great disclaimer. I, <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to do that for you, Keith. One of us here, one of us here is licensed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so long story short, I kept doing that, but I did it every single week. And if, and if the asset went down, I bought way more than I was scheduled to. And if it didn't, I just bought what I was supposed to. And all of a sudden I had an account and I'm not going to say how much it was, but it was a lot more than most people would ever see in their lifetime, which is put it that way. And how did I do that? I delayed gratification. I took a little bit out every single week, didn't touch shit. And all of a sudden I have a, an asset or assets that are very, very valuable. Why? Because I delayed that gratification and that's how you build real wealth. All right. Yeah. Problem is people, most people would see that $3,000 jump to $10,000 in cash out, right? Because of that dopamine hit. Yeah. When in re reality, if they could just sit on their hands or put their head in the damn sand as an, like an ostrich and, and get over it, yeah, 
the wealth would show up, right? Mm -hmm. Time value of money is a true, uh, it's a true statement. And uh, if we could, as humans, just kick the habit of wanting to buy that shiny object, right? Then a lot more people would have a lot more money. And that's really where 401ks came from, right? Is giving someone the ability to save money, work at one location for a hundred years and have something when they retired. Yeah. Which is also why there are regulations and rules around touching that money. You mm -hmm. penalize 10% if you touch it before 59, you're taxed on it heavily if it's a traditional 401k, those types of things come around. And there's still people that don't give a shit and will rip that money out of that account as quick as they can to go buy some shit that it doesn't create any value, but it gives them that rush. Yeah. And the dopamine hit is a true drug. It is. Right? It is a true drug without you pounding something into your veins, right? Or snorting something up your nose. Mm -hmm. um, and we see it all the time with our clients. And that's one of the hardest things to overcome from a psychological perspective of our client relationship. Yeah. But those who do, right, to your to your point, are sitting on a really good amount of money. And financial freedom is just that much closer than it, it is for a lot of the other people who just can't get over that. I need it. I want it. I get it. Yeah, that's true. So I'll give you guys another great example of this. Okay, You can look at any business, any entrepreneur, any operator that has built something valuable and you'll be able to find or pinpoint the delayed gratification. Usually it's working on the business, not working in the business. That's going to produce those results. But real estate, real estate is another one. I've always bought multifamily properties. Guess what? When I buy that property, it's usually a negative investment from a uh, net net and cash flow perspective for the first three to five years. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, I'm laying out anywhere between fifty and hundred thousand dollars every time I have to buy one. Then I'm putting probably another fifty to hundred thousand in it to make it nice enough where I feel I can rent it out. And I don't recoup that deposit, and I don't recoup the work that I put into that until you're probably in that fifth year of cash flow. But after you get to year five, every year it's producing a positive return on that money, and it also allows me to have another asset that has equity in it that I can use and leverage to go buy my next one. All right. Now, if I was so worried about the end result, the end result making money, well, guess what? I'm not going to do that. Why wouldn't I do that? Because I know that in three or five years, it's a negative or it's a loss. Well, guess what? If you stack enough of those and you can hold enough of those over time, you might find yourself with 20, 30, 40 properties after 10, 20 years, and you can retire off of that. No problem, no questions asked. However, if I was short sighted and didn't delay gratification, there's no way I would have that. You know, there, you can right. look at any of these examples and find that. Yeah. How do you think real estate's people, good? Yeah. Yeah, real estate's a good one, right? Um, it withstands the time test of money, right? It's it's an undefeated asset. But to your point, you've got to be able to look past your nose to see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, just like with any investing, just like with anything else, you know, there are tools out there that give you the ability to have some short term gratification and also the delayed gratification in a sense. Like what's very popular today is life insurance being utilized as a tool for liquidity on the front end to buy more of those assets. A lot of people in real estate use that as, as a tool to kind of push and pull money in and out. Um, so you, you get the short term gratification of being able to buy the asset, but it's still the delayed gratification of all the compound interest and the wealth inside of the real estate that you pick up. Okay. So it, it's kind of the best of both worlds there. But every other investment is delayed, right? You, you've got literally put your head in the damn cabinet and just don't pull it out for 20 years. There you go. You know, don't look at it. Don't pay attention to it dollar cost average money in so that you're putting money in and, you know, tranches or monthly or weekly or however you're doing it. But if you're truly after some financial success, you have to buy real estate. You have to invest in either stock market or some cryptocurrencies or whatever it might be that you, know, you want to do, but you just, you can't rip that bandaid off. Like, no. 
if, if you, you know, it's one of those things like, hey, when you get the itch, call me and, and let me come give you some Narcan, right? So that I can, <laughs> I can fix you. Uh, but it's like, they don't call me for the Narcan until after the goddamn thing has shown up on their doorstep. And now it's buyer's remorse. Yes. You know, and buyer's remorse is, is the bipolar opposite of that dopamine rush. It is a depression. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you're stuck. Now what do you do? Right. Yeah. Unless you want these corn balls who are like, oh, I'm going to buy it, hold it, look at it, return it. Like, like I fake bought it or wear it with the tags on and then return it. I mean, you know, unless that is your profession, uh, your professional dopamine rush, then dude, you, you, you're shit out of luck. And, uh, the problem is that that, that doesn't ever get any better. No. Right? I mean, it, it literally is, is a very hard curse to break, uh, yeah. unfortunately. So that leads into my next question. How do you coach people to get that out of them? Well, there's a little black couch and a lot of soft music that gets played. Um, you know, I don't know that you coach people out of it. I think you just have to you have to support them in that moment mm-hmm. and and just continuously drop educational pieces as to why it didn't work. Right? Cuz no one likes to be told they're wrong. No one likes to be told, "Hey, that was stupid" or, "Hey man, what are you thinking?" So, the way that I I kind of position that is more of a man, how do you feel about it? Knowing now what that feels like, what would you do different next time? And just kind of giving that reaffirmation of like, it's not too late. Yeah. And still you're an idiot without calling them an idiot. Right. Yep. Uh, because, I, you know, I think people need tough love in, in some spaces. And that's one of them, in my opinion, of like, hey, man, you've been you're 40 years old. You have zero assets. You're working. You're going to work till you're 160 at this pace. Why do we continue you know, touching the hot stove after yeah. the first attempt. Like if it burns you, it burns you. And it'll burn you again. It's going to burn you again and again and again. Right? Every like, time. If you get bit by a snake, how many snakes are you going to pick up afterwards? Hopefully none. None. You know, unless you're like a professional snake wrangler, which is like less than zero, 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 point, you know, point zero, 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 one percent of the population. Yeah. But when pain strikes, we typically run away from it. What people need to start understanding is that the the money decisions that they're making on a daily basis are really painful. Yeah. You know, you're not going to feel it today because we have another paycheck coming in the door. Well, if that paycheck goes away, then what? Then you feel it. Then you're going to feel feel it. it. And then you're panicking. Then it's panic. And how do I get out of this? I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to give you guys a, a pretty cool actionable takeaway that I hope at least one of you does, and then report back to us. I don't care what you want to invest in. I'm sure every single person here listening has something that they've wanted to invest in in the past or today. And so here's what I challenge you. I challenge you to pull out and make it automated, something small on a weekly basis, okay? And if you if that, if that you can do it in increments and invest in that asset in increments, do it. And if you can't, invest in increments in that asset, hold it there and probably hold it there in something that's going to pick up a fair amount of interest, um, like a high yield savings account. There you go. High yield savings account. All right. And I'm going to give you guys an example. If you've always wanted to invest in the stock market, okay, go out there each week. If it's 50 bucks, 25 bucks, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, put it into the spy or put it into whatever you want, but do it consistently enough and don't touch it. Okay. That's something that you can invest in increments. Same thing with any type of digital asset, but let's talk about real estate, real estate. You're not able to invest in incremental actions or incremental steps. Okay. So if you're going to, and real estate is your choice asset that you want to invest in, I would say every week, put a little bit aside into a high yield savings account. And when you get, your first, when you get enough to make your down payment and your closing costs, go out and start searching for a property, close on that property. Once you experience and go through this one time and prove to yourself that you can actually do it, it's amazing how repeatable and scalable that is, especially when you do it on a smaller basis, on a weekly, 
on, on a weekly time frame. You will, yeah. you should not feel it. Yep. Yeah. Then the rest of the game to that is like once you put that down payment down and get a renter in there, get the house reappraised, then do a cash out refi and pull your money back out and go do another one. That's it. And so, so if you do it the right way, you only got to save for the first one. You know, maybe you save a little bit more to buy a, a, a more expensive house in the second one. You know, there's there's a little bit of give and, and take there. But if you do it right and you're, you know, let's just say that 250 grand is your purchase price. And, you know, there's 5% loans now on investment properties, right? So yeah. you do 5% of that 350 down. Okay. Not a whole lot of money. You buy it, you get a renter in there, you get it reappraised. Typically it reappraises for a pretty decent amount more than what you bought it for because it's now producing cash flow, right? You're getting rent and banks like rent. Okay. And so now let's just say that you put 20 grand down. Uh, you put 20 grand down and do a cash out refi and maybe you're able to pull 35,000 out. Well, now you got your 20 grand back and you got 15 grand to play with. So give it five more of your 20. You got 15 of profit back in your bank. Rinse and repeat. Yep. You know, and, and I've been real successful coaching some of our clients through that to where I can name four or five clients that have not had any real estate in their name and over a 12 month span have four or five properties under their belt and are cash flow and an extra thousand bucks a month into their pocketbook. Yeah. And guys, you know, what Keith's referencing. And that's life changing to some people. Yeah. What Keith's referencing is the Burr method. Okay. You'll hear a lot of uh, real estate experts and pros talk about the Burr method. That's exactly what Keith just described. And right. the reality is your first property is the hardest. The second one's a little bit harder. I mean, the second one is also hard. The third one gets a little bit easier. Once you get past three, all right, this process is very, very scalable because the cash flow from the other units will continue to build and allow you to go out and get that fourth, fifth, and sixth property a lot faster than if you were just doing it without any type of um, track record or rental income to begin with. Right. All right. Yep. But these principles, okay, are the same exact principles that will allow you to build a great business. Okay. Nobody starts off day one with some crazy hit of a business unless the technology is so crazy, is so good that you know you're just going to go public right off the bat. Right. Those are unicorns. It doesn't really happen. Okay. The reality is you're going to sit there for the first two years and think that you made every mistake in a book. You probably will make every mistake in a book. You but should. If you're you should. <laughs> if you're doing it right, you really should. And, and then as long as you don't repeat those mistakes and you learn from them, you'll see growth. And then from year two to year five, okay, it'll probably be a different set of mistakes if you're not a dumbass. If you're a dumbass like me, you'll probably repeat some of them uh, because, hey, if you don't learn a lesson, you're going to repeat the fucking mistake. Okay. Right. I and like that. the delayed gratification on making mistakes over and over and over. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done that. Yeah. I'll I've still do it. Just FYI, <laughs> move flash. I'm going to make a mistake next week. I guarantee it. Yeah. Uh, and guys, what you're hearing here is the reality of entrepreneurship. Okay. There's no one that has everything figured out. And most people learn from trying, fucking it up. And saying, oh, that didn't work. Let me try this way. And you do that enough times where eventually you actually do figure it out. And then you're on to your next roadblock. All right. And the more roadblocks you can uncover and fix, the faster you'll be able to grow and scale and build, be, build something that's really worth something. And it's actually sustainable. Right. That's the name of the game. Learn from your mistakes. You're going to make them. You can't avoid them. Right. You can learn from people that have been there before and that'll shrink your learning curve and it'll shrink the amount of mistakes that you make, but you're still going to make. It. So just get them over with, learn from them, implement what you need to implement and keep it moving. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do or you can yeah. pout whine, and, and get emotional and depressed, but at some point you're going to come out of that funk anyway. So might as well just skip that whole step and take it on the chin. Keep it moving. That's it guys. Guys, that's a blueprint. All right. Delay your gratification. 
And again, I challenge each of you to find something that you've been thinking of investing in and practice delaying your gratification and actually get the required habits you need to build wealth. All right, you guys heard it here. Do us a favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with someone that needs to hear it. That's yeah, we want fans. instant gratification. We want instant gratification. Share this yeah. shit right now. <laughs> Hit the button. We want it now. Okay? Stop we, doing we, we don't want to wait. No. Right fucking now. Right fucking now. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, guys. We appreciate it. Take care.